Hi friends, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Maddie, and on this channel, we talk all things sustainability, and today is no different. We're talking about sustainability careers for engineers. This is a video that a lot of you have requested, and a lot of you have shown interest in how to make sustainability and engineering work together. So today we're gonna talk about the five career paths that you can take as an engineer to incorporate sustainability into your job. Let's dive right in. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to specify if there's a specific engineering niche like chemical engineering for that specific career path, because some of them do have engineering niches that more closely align to that role. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about environmental engineers, just because that one's kind of obvious and I want to teach you something new today. So if you are interested in environmental engineering, I'll link that video that I've already made up here in the cards. And you can go check that out once you've watched this video to the end. So the first career career path that I want to talk about is getting into energy efficiency engineering. And there are actually three kind of subsections that I want to talk about in this one. The first one being HVAC and building performance. In this career path, you'd be focusing on optimizing the heating and cooling of commercial buildings. You might be doing thermal analyses, looking at how to retrofit heat pumps or chillers. Maybe you're working on LED lighting upgrades and generally just helping these companies and buildings reduce their energy consumption. You might work for an energy service company, an architecture firm, or even a utility. The average salary for someone working in this kind of role in the US is $89,000. And just a reminder that this salary and all of the salaries that we talk about today will depend on your location, years of experience, and the actual company that is hiring you. So just keep that in mind, they are averages after all. Similar to the HVAC and building performance, another option if you want to go into energy efficiency for engineering is with industrial energy efficiency. So rather than looking at the commercial building side of things, you are looking at manufacturing plants and figuring out how to reduce their energy consumption there. A lot of folks who go into this field do end up becoming a certified energy manager just because that certification gives you a lot of background to be able to do that work. And the average salary for these positions is $93,000 per year. Now, if you want to work on the construction side of things, so building these plants or buildings, then you can become a green building engineer. Now this is very similar to the green building architect and you will likely be working very closely with green building architects. But rather than designing the building from scratch like the architect is, you are kind of their go-to person for doing all the energy modeling for that building to make sure that the building is designed to maximize their energy efficiency. The goal here is to create a building model that uses its resources as efficiently as possible. And the average salary for these folks is a little lower than the other two, coming in at 67 thousand dollars. Now the second career path I wanted to talk about is water engineering. You can also see this called a hydrologist or a hydrology engineer, but for this one you might want to consider getting a master's just to broaden your scope for job opportunities and generally you would want a background in civil or environmental engineering if you want to go into this one. For roles in this space you would want to look for job titles that say stormwater manager, wastewater project manager, or flood risk manager if you want to work in cities or areas that have a higher risk of being affected by floods and natural disasters. And the average salary for these folks is $107,000 in the US. Now this third one is specifically for chemical engineers and it is going into the sustainable agriculture field. Now, as many of you already know, agriculture is really struggling due to climate change and the increased intensity of natural disasters like floods, wildfires, and droughts. And the population is also increasing. So we have a higher demand for food. So feeding everyone is becoming a greater and greater challenge. This is actually one of the UN's sustainable development goals, which is to end hunger. And we can't do that without making our agricultural processes more efficient and adaptive to the changing climate. And this is where chemical engineers are a crucial part of making them more efficient. As a chemical engineer, you learn this very unique skill set, and you can apply that skill set to making the growing of food more efficient and potentially making that food more nutritious so that it goes further. Job titles to look out for if you are interested in this path would be chemical engineer at an agricultural company or something like agricultural process engineer 
engineer, a food systems engineer, something like that. Now I couldn't find an average salary for chemical engineers in the agricultural space because that is a very specific niche, but in general, the average salary for chemical engineers in the US is $98,000 per year. Not too shabby. Now this fourth one is specifically for materials engineers. They might also be called materials scientists, but it's going into sustainable products, the development and distribution of those sustainable products. Here you might be doing a life cycle analysis for a specific product and trying to reduce the resources that go into creating and distributing that product. You might look at designing materials that last longer, exploring alternatives like bio-based materials or recycled materials, and you might even look into the manufacturing process of that product to reduce the waste and energy consumption that goes into creating that product. If you're interested in this one, job titles to look out for are supply chain engineer, materials specialist, or materials engineer. And the average salary in the US for sustainable materials engineers is $138,000. That's the highest one on this list. Now this last one is pretty different from all the other ones because the day-to-day -day is really not going to be doing engineering, but you absolutely need an engineering background in order to excel in this role. And this is a technical communicator or generally a more policy focused role. Now, as science advances more and more and we start to incorporate that science into our state, local and federal policies, we need people who know the science who can also write the policies or at least advise on writing the policies. If you were a well-rounded student in school, so you were not only really good in engineering, math and science, but you also excelled in writing and history, this might be a really good option for you because you can pull all those different skills together into this one job. In terms of jobs to look out for, you might want to look for engineer or analyst in a government role. So with your state or local government, you would hold a title like that. And there you would kind of be the engineer surrounded by all of the policy people, again, advising them on your technical expertise. The alternative is to have a title like policy writer or technical communicator at a larger engineering firm. And this is kind of the opposite. So you will be kind of the policy person surrounded by all of the engineers. And while the salaries for both of those do vary greatly, especially depending on if you are at an engineering firm or your local government, but generally the average salary in the US for technical communicators is $82,000. Now, if you're at the stage where you actually want to start looking for jobs in this space, to find these opportunities, I have a few different ways to do so. The first is to look at job boards like Terra.do and Climate Base, and they have a really great array of roles specifically for engineers who want to go into more sustainability focused roles. And when you're searching here, make sure to put your specialty in engineering in the search bar. So if you were a mechanical engineer in undergrad, put mechanical engineer in the search bar. Don't just put engineering because again, the roles do vary greatly depending on that specific niche that you were in. And then another way you can find roles here is to look into startups. A lot of times they don't actually post their job openings on LinkedIn or Indeed or anything like that. So if you have startups that you're interested in working with, you really like their mission and are interested in the things that they're doing, reach out directly to the company and see if they can accommodate you. A lot of the times if they look at your resume and they are trying to expand and bring people on as startups tend to do, they might actually hire you. This is a little more risky, but it's a great way to put your name out there. And that's all I have for you today. If you found this video interesting, you might want to check out this video over here that compares environmental engineering to environmental science. If you are still on the fence about which direction you want to go in, but if you watch this all the way to the end, thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you next week. Bye.